Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingo. Just listen, I'm going to sing alone without any clapping. Kikalina na binu belet na, de belet bitana, ani na akwan, belet de kebir bishil na, kani ta figidam tanas, mata wunsu kalamat le nas, kalamata ilag bat nas. Kalamat al bishe jama shakil manasla salam ke de bada ma ita ke de bada ma ana de au salam tanina aishan anihna akwan mabru le hakuma tajunu hakuma jibu salam fi junu mabru hasada muno ya maru shukran le rabu na ya salam de wosulu ke lena na binu belena sawa. You guys will respond, sawa, sawa. Kelina na binu belet na. Sawa, sawa. De belet bitana. Sawa, sawa. Anih na akwan. Sawa, sawa. Belet de kebir bishil na. Sawa, sawa. Kelina na binu belet na. Sawa, sawa. De belet.
Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Madingo. This week on Fixing South Sudan, a special panel looks at various dimensions and types of federation as peace partners debate about the character of our democracy. What are the merits and demerits of a federal system for South Sudan? Can a truly federated South Sudan help it realize peace with itself and fix the nation. Joining us to make sense of this topic are our distinguished panelists, namely Honorable Richard K. Mola, the Minister for Federal Affairs. Honorable Mary Ayed Mijo, Chairperson, Specialized Committee on Decentralized Governance and State Affairs, and a member of the Council of State, Honorable Luca Manoja, former, former Minister of Cabinet Affairs and a member of Parliament TNLA. Honorable Justice Deng Bio, former Chairman, South Sudan Law Review Commission. Honorable Stephen Farquhar, SPLM, SPLAIO, Secretary for External Affairs and its representative to our Germany. We are happy to welcome all of you to the show. <clears throat> welcome yourselves and welcome the panelists and welcome the moderators. <laughs> so we are going to have an hour long discussion about federalism and I will start with the minister for federal affairs. He can tell us what the ministry is about briefly, and then we can talk about federalism. Welcome. Welcome, Minister. Thank you. The ministry was established as a result of the peace agreement which was signed in Addis Ababa in uh, 2015. And uh, with the revitalization of the agreement, the ministry continues to exist as one of the components of the executive of the government of South Sudan. We were established to prepare the people of South Sudan for a federal system of governance because it is stated in the agreement that it is an overwhelming uh, demand of the people of South Sudan. It's a popular demand of people of South Sudan. And as such, it is our duty to enlighten them, to raise their awareness, to inform them and educate them on what federalism is. And the level of awareness is down and many don't know even about the existence of the ministry and what federalism is about. So can you tell us what it is? Yes, why people don't know much about the ministry is because of lack of political will. There is lack of political will to support the ministry to establish itself properly and to make itself known to the people of South Sudan. However, we have been in existence, struggling, but now we are catching up with our uh, presence of the people of South Sudan because we got some uh, foreign uh, support from uh, international ideas. That's why we are able now to organize events like this one to inform the people that we are actually there. And uh, <coughs> federalism is a system of government. It's a system of government where there are more than two levels of government. In most cases, there are three levels of government. As we have it now, we have three levels of government, which is the national, which could be the federal level of the federal government, the state government, and the counties as the local government, the third level of government. These levels of government have their powers set out in the Constitution, clearly defined in the Constitution. And these powers include political, executive, and administrative powers, as well as financial powers. Powers are to be shared between the various levels of government. In the extent that what the national uh, uh, government can do are things that are to do with the entire country, like defense, foreign affairs, and so forth. But other issues which can be tackled at the state level, particularly in the provision of services, like education, health, agriculture, this could be handled by the state. It doesn't need the entire country. And then there are also other services much lower down there, like primary schools, feeder roads, and so forth. Those could be provided by the local government. It doesn't need to be done by an entire country. So it, in a federal setup, these powers are clearly 
divided, clearly protected in the Constitution <coughs> to the extent that each level of government is able to perform its function without interference from any level of government. It, is, it must be made very clear that in a federation, there is no subordination. No level of government is subordinate to the other. They are all equals. They are co-equals. Each level of government performs its functions according to its powers and according to its resources that are available. And it must be made clear also that you cannot devolve powers to lower level of government without adequate financial resources. In a federation, there must be legal provision for uh, decentralization or devolution of financial resources. Let, let me put this to you. We are the world's youngest nation and going through transition. And what kind of system do we have at the moment? And what does it say about federation? Are we in some kind of uh, federation already or not? Right now, I would say we are decentralized and we are semi-federal. We are semi-federal in the sense that we have not we have not given the necessary autonomy to the lower levels of government. There is constant interference with the lower level of government. There is even amendment of laws that affect their interests without seeking their consent. There is not adequate financial uh, provision for the levels of government. As I was saying before, out of our current, in our current budget, for example, you have only 9% of the national revenue going to the states, which are about 32 or 33, plus Abe and about 500 level, uh, local governments. That is totally inadequate. They cannot do anything with the 9% of, uh, percent of the resources. The 91% of the budget is spent here in Juba. This is terribly inequitable and unfair, and you cannot develop a country in this manner. That is what a decentralized system is, and it is because the decision is taken at a national level. That's right. And Honorable Mary Ayen uh, represents that committee on the uh, decentralized governance. She can tell us what it is, tell us even about our current system, what we have in place, and then we can gradually speak about what federation is. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much, Virginia, and I appreciate the news of Federal Affairs and uh, Social Media for organizing this discussion. And I thank you for inviting me to be to my lunch in this time uh, and What are we talking about decent uh, uh, federalism? Uh, call us actually to pay much attention to the, when we discuss the perception.
Then we have, uh, we have a federal system. Maybe the whole thing is just about the name, that we are not called the Federal Republic of South Sudan. But the system we have in place right now, we have various enti entities with powers. Uh, the issue is with the individuals that are running these institutions. And for me, whether in, 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 in a federal system or the decentralized system or whatever other types of governance system, I think the whole issue will be about the institutions that are running the, sy the system itself. If we have weak institution, believe me, even if with the absolute uh, federalism, still we will have the same challenges and the same difficulties we are, we are facing Thank right you now. Thank uh, Luka Manuja, you go a long way and South Sudan has experience with federalism <coughs> and there was division that happened uh, during the regional government, and there were some challenges with that. And the understanding of some South Sudanese is that federal, federalism means division, means partitioning the country. So there is that kind of thinking that is out there. What do you say about federalism and the experience of South Sudanese with federalism? South Sudanese do not have experience about federalism. Uh, federalism is a system of power sharing. One would have thought, because the ethnic groups in South Sudan are very proud, each one is proud of its own self, of its identity, of its wealth, and of its credibility. So one would have thought that they would be happy to have a system where powers are divided according to the levels at which these powers are exercised. And therefore, we should be happy if we have a county where people exercise powers which are not irrelevant to, that, to the territory of that county. And if we have a state, we have powers which are only relevant to the territory of that state. And if we have a national government, then we have powers which apply to everybody in all those states. And that is what federalism is. Unfortunately, I want, to, I, I want to, to capture something, first of all, that I find myself uh, exiled because we have spent a lot of time talking about power, not talking about governance. That's why we are disagreeing. We are disagreeing because we are talking about power and not about governance. We have a system today which has a federalist structure it doesn't have federal functions. We are producing politicians and instead of producing agriculturists and doctors and engineers. And therefore, we are not busy governing our people. We are busy, most of us here, the elite, is struggling what power to occupy. But that power we occupy is not related to achieving something. You know, it's not related to achieving something. If it was, we could have been able today to say the system of governance we have today is a decentralized system. What does it mean? Does it mean that counties are responsible for primary education and the state are responsible for secondary education and the national government is responsible for higher education? Does it mean like that? Does it mean that a particular county wants to achieve a level of one primary school per payam? Does it mean that every state wants to achieve a university managed by itself, established by the university, by the state, and managed by the, by the state? What is happening now in our so-called state, with our administrative institution, they are waiting for money from Juba. But there is no plan. There is no plan to say, for instance, uh, Gorky State, they would like to have three secondary schools 
from between now and 2013. That's what I would call governance. But what we are busy now, we say, oh, here is state, we don't like the governor. We want another governor. Uh, Jongole state, we, no, no, we want another governor because that one belongs to the ethnic group. If we don't, die, if we don't transform from power struggle to governance, we are ending nowhere. We are fighting because of power, not Hon because Honorable of governance. Honorable Luca is speaking about governance. There are different types of federation. And maybe let's talk about a solution. What kind of federal system fits South Sudan? There are no different types of federation. There is only one definition of governance. It is either a centralized government or it is a federated government. A federated government means that we have powers which are applied to a level of government where somebody has said the higher level does not need to intervene. In a centralized government, do you wait for what the central government has decided and you implement what the central government decided? I will tell you about the different the types The principle of, of sharing of power is what is federalism. Let me tell you about the different types that exist and in the context of the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia, ethnic-based federalism, Nigeria, America, you have a unitary system where the central government is powerful, takes everything, and then you have a devolved kind of government. And we are talking about fixing South Sudan, building a nation that is concerned about having a weak central government and having a more powerful state. So where is the balance? That is you do not have to copy anybody because the system of federalism we want should be the one which we sit here and we say, look, what power do we want the national government to have? What power do we have the state to have? What power do we want the county to have? The, 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 the definition of authority, but not the numbers. Ethiopia did not have ethnic federalism, or it wasn't called. Ethiopia was always a federal state, even during the time of the monarchy. And the authority was always divided on ethnic ground. You had a rust for Sidama, a rust for Sosa, a rust for so, so they just copied the Andalus system and called it a federation. We must design a system according to our needs. We uh, choose needs. how do we want to divide our, our powers. And then they will say, oh, you know, in South Sudan, this is the type of federalism. Thank but you. But we don't say, oh, we Ethiopian system, American system, Nigerian system. This is escaping. We are trying to import. We don't need to import. Thank you very much. And let me have a reaction from someone who is familiar with making laws, who has been part of constitution making. And we are talking about what kind of, what federalism is, and then what type of federalism, what works for South Sudan. Welcome. Just to Thank you, uh, <coughs> Comrade Madi. Um, you know, Federalism is just in simple, uh, say that the public understand, is a, is a system of devolving powers, dividing powers between the center and then the other levels down. As the minister said, now currently in South Sudan we have three levels of government. Now, the challenge is not the issue of choosing a word federation or federalism. Because what we have today, this decentralized system, is part of federalism. It's a federation also. But then the issue is we need to see that of the needs. And then, as Dr. Lucas said, we define what do you want, how do you want this country to be governed. Now, i give you an example of uh, of uh, you know, when we discuss with Khartoum, people did not use names first to reach to a system of governance that we are going to govern our interim period or whatever. But they agreed on issues. And now, later on, they give the name decentralization. So they agreed first a system whereby you have two uh, countries, you have two, two uh, uh, two systems of government, I mean, one in, uh, uh, in, in, in South Sudan, one country, two systems of, uh, of, of, of government, and then you have the two armies. This has never happened. And then you have, you have one central bank, but 
two banking, banking uh, windows. Okay? We, we, we were having two legal systems. The secular system in South Sudan, and then the uh, theocratic system, that is Sharia based in Khartoum. So, these were issues that were discussed and agreed upon. Now the issue in South Sudan, and also as a lawyer, it goes to, to what extent do we respect really the, the supremacy of the rule of law? Because as Dr. Lucas said, it is easy. Today we can agree that let us have let us develop powers to these levels. But if we don't respect, a new one of course will have to be put in the laws, like uh, uh, Honorable Ayan said, there are state uh, constitutions, there are national, con there are national constitution, all this. But the point is, do we respect Starting from our traditional constitution, do we respect all the provisions? Are we working according to the law? I think those are the challenges. Because nowadays, like uh, sometimes when I wrote an article about it, the great, uh, you know, regional conferences, and I gave two criticisms to one to the Greater Equatorial Conference when they started to talk about it, federalism. And my criticism was that now you Greater Equatoria Regional Conference, are you a party? Because these are issues that are supposed to be developed by political parties, system of government. Also in, uh, in, in, in Greater Bahia Regional Conference, I criticized them for coming out with the, the resolution. Uh, are you talking about the national no, dialogue? No, no, no. There were two, before the incident of uh, 2013. Go ahead. In, in, in Baragaza, they went and made one of the recommendations was that we want uh, President or, or uh, Comrade Selfakir to be our can to be the candidate for election in 2015. Okay? It was also the mandate. Your because point it is that the regions are delving into issues that they shouldn't are, talk about. And, are, and, and, and I criticize them as unconstitutional board. Been given when we drafted the national constitution, we led the way forward. We said let the country remain in this form in transitional form for four years, and then now there will be constitutional review commission, which will bring all the South Sudanese to come and say what type of government do what. And and we, sorry, yeah. but if you are saying that the laws are not being respected, what is the solution? Yeah, the solution is to respect the laws, of course, to follow the procedure. Because now, if I ask you, what has gone wrong with the decentralized system we have today? What has gone wrong? Nobody will, I mean, uh, if you have those uh, talking of, uh, of federalism, and, and you know very well decentralized system also is part of federalism, then the question should be, what has gone wrong? We are supposed, and these were the things we are going to discuss in the Constitutional Review Commission, especially in the Constitutional Conference. That the decentralization, if the people saying it has failed, then they point out to what extent has it failed to achieve the objective of the South Sudanese people. If it has not failed, then we may continue to follow it as a, a type of federal system. We are getting there, but we only have to overcome some of the challenges and the difficulties we are witnessing. Thank you very much, and let me welcome uh, Honorable Stephen Parfol, uh, who has been part of this debate because there has been no agreement on the number of the states and the boundaries, and really we are talking about the character of South Sudan. And so, what does the agreement say about federalism, and what do you say about it? Thank you very much, uh, Brother Mading, uh, for organizing this timely forum. It is the only forum that can fix South Sudan, as you call it here. I represent a political platform with a vision uh, we see as democratic federalism. In fact, this ministry uh, of uh, Dr. Richard K. Muller was produced out of that uh, debate in Addis Ababa. We have been uh, presenting this at all the political platform of this country. 
You know, the people of South Sudan have been clamoring for federalism since the 1940s. In this city of Juba, if you read the minutes of Juba uh, conference of 1947, the people of South Sudan have always been demanding this. So you cannot fix South Sudan without it. Uh, Dr. Richard K. Mula and uh, uh, Molana uh, Byung have made my day when they uh, emphasize the importance of protecting the autonomous of the level of government. Actually, that is the problem. We are a structurally federal, but we have never practiced what is in the structures of our constitution. So we are demanding uh, constitutional federalism that respect the autonomous status of all the level of the government. You know, um, there was uh, an experience before the crisis that uh, a law was enacted, local government act, to empower, actually to create the local government as a level of government. That has not been respected. The governors continue to appoint commissioners to undermine that level of government. If you don't respect this, you will never have uh, a true federalism. Uh, we have been talking about decentralization, uh, that we are a decentralized system of government. I don't see what has been decentralized in this country. I have never seen anything devolve to the state level. I was in let, the let, state. Let me put back this question to you because you, uh, you are the political parties uh, who are determining the fate of the nation. Why are the laws not being respected and what is going to be done about it? What are you doing about it? Well, you know, um, <laughs> technically speaking, you don't use politics to manage the law. You use law to manage politics. In South Sudan, it's just opposite. We have been managing the, the, the laws politically. And where there is no political will to enforce the law at all level of government, you will never have a true federal system. And, and I've just given you the example where in violation of the Local Government Act, our governors continue to appoint commissioners. Where in that law, the Local Government Act, it is it's stipulated that commissioners are elected by their people at that level government of, uh, you know, governance. It will take a political leadership with a political will to enforce the laws. And would you say it will take an overhaul of the current system for us to respect the laws? Yes, in fact, if you read our archives, our archives partially has overall this system. It is a system that must be rebooted. And like when a the computer. agreement is implemented, everything will fall in place. Yes, because you know this agreement actually fixed South Sudan Thank uh, you very much. in I'm so many ways. Sorry, sorry for interrupting you. I am going to bring in uh, the audience and for those who are watching on social media, Dolku Media page, this is Fixing South Sudan special panel. And with us are Honorable Richard K. Muller, who is the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, sorry, Minister for Federal Affairs, uh, to my left. And you have Honorable Mary Ayan Mijuk, Chairperson, Specialized Committee on Decentralized Governance and State Affairs, and a member of Council of States. Honorable Luca Manoja, former National Minister of Cabinet Affairs, and a member of Parliament, TNLA, and Honorable Justice Deng Byung, former Chairman, South Sudan Law Review Commission, and Honorable Tiben Parkwal, SPLM, SPLAIO, Secretary for External Affairs, and its representative to our Germany. Time now for you to weigh in on social media and also for our studio, studio audience to weigh in 
to ask your questions, to put your views quite briefly because time is um, against us.